Welcome everybody, I'm Professor Stephen Forsyth and I'm at Nottingham Trent University and I'm the curator for the pubmlst.org Chronobacter website and what I'm going to go through today is little ways in which you can use the database for yourself. If you need to contact me, my email address is here. The website which will let you know about our activities and also our publications can be found here and if you want to look me up a bit more then obviously I'm on researchgate and academia.edu. So we're going to focus on pub MLST for Chronobacter. And I'm going to make four videos all together. This first one is just going to be a quick aspects of the database. We're going to look at the protocols for the seven loci. We're going to look at how the sequences are put together, how they've been chosen a little bit. The next video will be focusing on the isolates database itself, looking at the various option settings, things which people I think are overlooking, the isolate fields, how you can look at single loci and multiple loci. And also then we're going to move on to part three, which is the expanded database, where we're moving towards the whole genome MLST. And there are various schemes that either you can set up, you can choose the loci of your choice, or you can use some of our pre-described ones, such as ones for taxonomy, uh, tax MLST. There's one based upon the ribosomal MLST as well, which is up to 53 loci. And then a new one which we got is on COG uh, MLST, and that's 1865 loci. So that's a, the big part video. Uh, of the four. Then I'm going to finish off with one I'm just calling part four extras, going to be anecdotal information, how to export the data, little things like looking at eBurst and maybe some example analysis. Before we move on, I just wanted to say thanks to Keith Jolly at Oxford University who helped to set us up in the first place and continues to support us. Adam Baldwin, Chris Dawson at University of Warwick who got the initial scheme working for us. Susan Joseph, my PhD student, who's done tremendous amount of work and numerous publications from looking at the MLST. The website is supported by Wellcome Trust and last but inevitably never least are all the contributors who've submitted so many sequences to the database. So let's move on to the website itself and here we are at the Coronabacter MLST database. And when we look at it, there's essentially two regions. The first one on information, primers, protocols used for amplification and sequencing. That's one which we're going to focus on in a moment. We're then going to move on to sequence and profile definitions. And the second video is going to be looking at the isolates and expanding from there. Over here is just talking about how to cite the database and the origin with regard to the work from Keith Jolly. Uh, and the number of schemes which are there at present. So if we click here, we have the primers which are used for the seven loci. The actual genes themselves are listed and the laboratory protocols are given here, along with the two sets of primers, one for the initial MST analysis and the other one for the actual sequencing. So all the details are given there. They originally come from the paper by uh, Baldwin et al. in BMC Microbiology. Um, and it's just reproduced here so that anybody can use this. Sometimes we do get organisms which are a bit recalcitrant. And what we commonly do is that we just swip, switch primers that we use. So uh, we use the inner primers if the outer ones aren't using. And most of the time that works. And we'll go into other things. Uh, a little later on. So let's just go back and here we go to the sequencing and profile definitions and again the website is in two parts. We have the one where we can uh, query the database and we have ones here where we can export and analyze. Now if you've got a lot of sequences you might want to use the batch. So if we go down here and here's we've got about two pages of sequences uh, to be analyzed. So if I just copy those, drop them in, and we don't have to say which loci it is, it'll automatically find them, or we could go and just get the computer to search for that FASTA file. Just press submit and immediately it goes through the database 
as it already is. And it tells us that first one was a PPSA 103, next one's 104, next one was ATPD 58. So it's going through immediately assigning the allele numbers if they already exist in the database. When we come down here, we've got an example where no match is found. That's where I need to have the chromatogram, I need to have the sequence, and I'll go through, double check, and if it's true, then I will assign a new allele number because I'm the curator, so only I can do that. But anybody else can put your sequences in here, press the magic button, and find out what those alleles are uh, are representing. So it's a very, very simple thing to do. Now, it could be that you want to make your own phylogenetic trees. So you can go over here, you can download individual alleles. We're not going to look at these in this particular video, uh, the extended MLST and the GCOG. We're just going to come down here to look at the conventional seven loci. And here we have a description of the seven loci as per the original publication. PPS should really be PPSA. It's just a typo that's been there for a while now. And classic one, if we go to the Fuse A, we can see it's a fixed length of 438 bases. And we can click and download that. And for me, it automatically goes into Mega. So from Mega, we can either do an alignment, we can make a phylogenetic tree, but we can also export it. So you can either do phylogenetic analysis, uh, or you can export it here uh, under the FASTA file format and various other schemes. So easy to download. And remember, this is an open access database. Uh, there's no registration. It's free access. That's the whole point of it. So you can do that for any of the individual loci. Could be that you want to export them another way. So if we go and choose MLST here, click select, you can include the clonal complex, and you can choose whether you want three, four, five, six, or seven loci within each sequence type. We can just do all, and we can then ask it to align them, concatenate them, and then we just press submit. And what it'll do, it'll come up with a window, and it tells you to click here to follow the progress. Now, depending how many sequences will depend how long that's going to take. And it may just take uh, two minutes or it may take considerably longer when we come to the whole genome MLST. So we're not going to wait for that. It's just basic material that comes out. So if we go back. Then there are other features which you can do. You've got sequence similarity. So if you've got a loci of, of interest, let's go for ATPD. And you know that you're interested in uh, allele number five, and you want to see which other ones are close to it. Then you'll find that allele 11, 19, 83, these are the nearest ones with one, two, three mismatches. And if we just go here, we can compare them. And you can see it's position 225, where we got a T to C conversion. What we can also do, we can go back and we can compare to. So again, let's just go for ATPD. And again, we'll go for number five. Uh, let's just for the sake of analysis, just 103, submit, oh. and that was not being <laughs> defined, my mistake. So let's go for number one instead. And it tells us that ATPD1 and ATP5 differ in six nucleotides, and here's the positions. Now, one thing which I think people don't use very much is looking at the uh, Explorer. If we're to look at, let's move on to like Fuse A, just another one of the, the classic seven. Here it is. And we're going to select all the allele variations. If we click here, we're going to see the polymorphic sites. 
and we can see every position where there's a variation giving us the allele numbers and if you look carefully you can see quite often this is the third position where this happens so this would infer these are probably synonymous changes and we can go back we can visualize that by just pressing translate and there we are we can see that many many of these are different in the nucleotide sequence around here but they're totally the same when it comes to the translation so there aren't really really a great deal of changes there bear in mind we are looking across the whole genus so i'm going to finish the quick exploration of the database here so we looked at the primers protocols sequence and profile definitions the next part of the video is going to look at the isolates and then we're going to go big time